Hello, my name is Michael Keneally and this is part two of my video Saturn Meets the Dark Goddess 2017 to 2018. In part one we heard what it means for each of us when Saturn crosses into Vedic Sagittarius and enters Mula Nakshatra ruled over by Niriti, the goddess of death and destruction. There's really deep, powerful meaning for each of us and it's good to hear what it means for you individually if you want a reading or take, you know, enrol on one of my courses. But in this part two, we look at what the movement, the, ch the sign change of Saturn means for some signs anyway. But first of all, I want to draw your attention to coincidence. Saturn moves into Vedic Sagittarius on the 26th of October 2017. And therefore Saturn enters Mula Nakshatra, Mula lunar sign ruled over by Niriti. But what happens at that time? It's Halloween. It's Samhain. So by coincidence, Saturn's sign change occurs at the same time as Samhain, the time when in the spiritual religion of the ancient Irish, and I'm speaking to you from the west of Ireland, our healing centre here, the veils between the worlds were thin. And forces of death, destruction and turbulence issued forth in the world. That's the nature of the seasonal energy of Samhain and what a coincidence that Saturn meets the dark goddess at this time. So what happens locally is from the book of invasions we hear that at this time the Morrigan, the war goddess of the ancient Irish mates every Samhain with the Dagda, the good god the good god of the land and the sky with his cauldron of plenty. And that annual mating gives sovereignty, her gift is sovereignty, whereas his gift includes bodily wealth and welfare. And so it's a great coincidence that Saturn enters Vedic Sagittarius and meets Niriti at the same time as the yearly feast of Samhain. And indeed we're near the actual alleged site of the mating in the ancient Book of Invasions, which is where the river Unshin leaves Loch Arrow and flows down to the sea and enters the sea just near here. Indeed we're close to the royal site of the kings of Connaught, beneath which lies the real power place, Oanigat Cave, the cave where the Morrigan was deemed to dwell, the Irish war goddess. But she is ethical. Her gift is sovereignty if you fight and stand up for yourself in an ethical way. And that's why it's a very useful additional point to be made, helping the understanding of Niriti, the ancient Indian goddess of death and destruction, who Saturn meets now. So I just meant, want to mention a couple of other things that are going on. As I mentioned in part one, Rahu the North Node crossed from Vedic Leo into Vedic Cancer at the time of the Great American Eclipse of the 21st of August. And so we had Rahu in the Gandanta at the same time as Saturn in the Gandanta. So the Gandanta zones are the very sensitive, insubstantial, potentially inspirational transition points from water signs to fire signs. And if you have a planet there, do get in touch with me for a reading because there's so much I can tell you about your destiny and about how you can heal and empower in relation to it. So that's point number one. Point number two is that at the same time as that eclipse, Kalsapa Yoga reasserted itself in the heavens. Now Kalsapa Yoga is when all the Vedic planets are on one side of the nodal axis. All of them are hemmed in between Rahu North Node and Ketu South Node. 
So they're all in one half of the Vedic charts. And this has a very dangerous energy. It's divisive, it's treacherous. Um, it's bad for management of the mind because half of every month the moon is in with the planets, but the other half of every month the moon is out in unsupported in the other half of the charts. And so it can be a matter of thinking running on, of obsession, of fear. Now, Kalsapa Yoga was big in 2016 and uh, running on into part of January this year, 2017. But now Kalsapa Yoga has reasserted itself. And fascinatingly, that long Kalsapa Yoga of 2016 saw the rise of Donald Trump. He was voted into power by the American people. And he has Kalsapa Yoga in his birth chart. What does that mean? Now, this is not to say that all people who have Kelsarpa Yoga are necessarily divisive and ranting individuals. They can be. But the whole point, like anything else, any difficult astrological configuration is an opportunity for spiritual growth. And so you can get really ethical spiritual people who have seen the divisiveness and have gone beyond that to spiritual awareness to living more in contact with divine meaning. And the other point I want to mention is Sade Sate. Now, Sade Sate is when Saturn transits before the sign occupied by your moon in your birth chart, when Saturn transits that sign, and when Saturn transits the following sign. That's seven and a half years. And it's really important to know, therefore, if you have moon in Vedic Libra, Vedic Scorpio, Vedic Sagittarius or Vedic Capricorn, where you are in relation to Sadisate. Because Sadisate is a time when things in your life will die, when you must be separated from things. There will be patches when your mind will be very unsteady and turbulent. And the whole process of moving through the three signs, the sign before the moon, the sign of the moon, and the sign after the moon takes seven and a half years. But there's a much more accurate measure of that, which is Saturn's movements through the nakshatras to either side of your birth moon in your Vedic astrology chart. And so they will accurately chart, for example, when your mind will be particularly challenged, when you will have a fool's paradise period and when Saturn will be drawing his last drops at the end of the Sati Sati period. So if you're in Sati Sati, particularly if you have your moon in Scorpio, Sagittarius or Capricorn measured on the Vedic side of your zodiac, get in touch with me for a really detailed reading. The other thing to mention is Ashtamashani. So that's when... Saturn transits the eighth sign from your natal moon. So people who have moon in Vedic Aries have had Ashtamashani for the, net for the last two and a half years. Their Ashtamashani ends on the 26th of October 2017. And people with moon in Taurus start Ashtamashani. Now Ashtamashani is so important to know about because it's at a time when you, you really can feel like retreating from the world, you, you, you appear to lose the plot, your, your efforts seem to be fruitless. But really what's happening is that Lord, Sha, Lord Shani, Saturn, is asking you to address your karmic scripts. And as I speak now, Aries moons are just ending their Ashtamashani, but Saturn is getting the last drops out of them. He wants them to understand where they have negative karmas they must burn, so that when they move out of Ashtamashani at the end of October, they are lightened. They are able to hold the torch of their new creative freedom. They're able to express themselves. It's really important to identify the karmas and scripts that Ashtamashani will bring to you if you're just leaving it or just entering it. So my Worldwide Readings website is www.starwheelastrology.com 
or if you like you can do a course with me that's www.mastervedicastrology.com and my courses I'm very proud of them because their focus is your chart and my chart so that means we can be completely authentic there's no formula sort of churned out at you as part of a group or whatever this is completely individual caring teaching there's opportunity for western crossover if you like there are videos to support the teaching and above all and this is true of my readings and my courses always there's consideration that the perception the magnificent perception of Vedic astrology backed up by Western astrology can be a clear channel towards selecting needed healing needed empowerment work and the sort of healing approaches that are available are on my partner Maggie Pashley's website www.maggiepashley.com m-a-g-g-i-e-p-a-s-h-l-e-y.com and, and they really are so transformative so strengthening you know there's there's many of them from you know hypnotherapy to EFT emotional freedom technique where you tap on the acupressure points there's emotion code there's body code there's access bars access consciousness the list is long but it could be so useful of you to be reborn through healing, to be empowered, to be able to leave behind damaging weaknesses of the past. So, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.